Hey guys, this is Max Cup 4 and today we'll be looking at some PvP tips and tricks for you guys to improve on. So right off the get-go, when you start the game, you can be looking over here. You can have these first four squads available, uh, or maybe more than that, but they're all going to be the two or one tier squads, as you can see in the top left corner. But when you start off, you, you're going to have a lot of options on what you can actually do. So you have these four options and you have 200 manpower right off the get go. So a lot of people like to do is they'll be like, hey, most expensive squad, I'll wait one second and send this expensive squad to the center. Personally, I don't like to do that. What I like to do is get a cheaper squad. Um, personally, these scouts are something I like to get. These scouts, cool thing about them, if you check the individual, they have 225 um, stamina versus your average soldier over here. He has, let's see him. Ah, let me select him. He has 125 stamina. So he, they're roughly going to be get there twice as fast because they're not going to run out of breath and they're going to be able to run. The reason for this is because they're carrying not as much equipment. So just keep in mind, these guys are quicker, they'll get to the point quick, but they cannot dig in. So a smart thing to do is send these guys to a position that you really, really want to take. Maybe this isn't as important, but say maybe you want to take get up to this house. You might reach there before the enemy might still be over here. And he comes around this corner and you obliterate him with the MG34. That can be a very important thing. So just keep that in mind with your scout squads. Also, another thing to note is how I have my infantry squad set up here, all right? So I have them all bunched up in cover right here. So say I put them in over here and I go over here to micro on the right side of the map, that's not gonna be good for me because he might sneak up one single dude, throw a grenade, and these guys are all compute. They're all bad. So what I'm gonna do is give you an example of what I would ideally do when I'm coming up here. All right, say so they're coming in from over here. Initially, I'm just going to tell them right-click over here, but I'm going to position my guys how I want them. I'm going to put a machine gun over there. I'm going to put a machine gun over here. I'm going to put a rifleman back there with them. MP40 up front to cover. And then, let's see, who we got left? These two guys? I'm going to put them over here. And they're going to stay in cover. So, so this doesn't look entirely that much different but one thing you will notice is they're way more spaced out so it's going to take like four grenades to kill all these guys versus one or two so that's another cool thing my mgs are in the, the rear positions they have good cover um they can cover both sides mp40 is right here where he can take out any enemies that come up close and the rifleman are kind of just off the side so they won't get killed by a grenade at all, right off the bat so just keep this in mind and try to position your guys a little bit more strategically. Um, it can be a pain to group them back up, but if you just do this, and then right off the bat, you hold shift one, you can get a hotkey to them. So hotkeys are very important. Now I've split my guys up. I got here and here, I got here and here. They're all split up and they're all across the map. And I simply hit one, I have my whole squad back. So one has got everyone back together. Cool thing you can do there. So just keep that in mind. Try to space your guys out and be a little bit more effective and don't take as much damage from grenades. All right, guys, next thing we're going to do is what to do if you guys are actually reach the point second. So a lot of the times you'll have someone that's maybe they got their scout squad up there and they've reached the point first. So you, you guys are over here and you start taking uh, start taking fire from them because they've got they got to the point quicker and there's not much you can do. So initially you're going to go click control and you guys you guys are all going to take go prone. So what I would say is definitely throw some smokes right off the bat. Smokes are going to cover you or conceal you, excuse me. And you guys will be able to at least hide a little bit and not get killed as quickly. So you're going to want to see I have an MG34 here and two riflemen. I'm going to keep this as my base of fire while I push up with my other guys. So my other guys are slowly pushing up. And as we push up. We're just going to crawl forward with our smoke grenades. So that. Throwing smokes, throwing smokes. Slowly going up, slowly going up. Smoke, smoke. F, I'm clicking F3. I'm using the hotkeys for this, so it's way easier. There goes another smoke. We're just creeping up slowly, creeping up slowly. And all, all this while, this little engagement is going over on over here. You can move them to some cover while this is all taking place. So that way, that way you guys aren't all just dying right off the bat. And say we get to the enemy point, enemy cover is right here. Um, then if you want, you can spread them out a little bit because he might know you're coming through the smoke and you don't want him to know. So 
And then you can throw some grenades. Make sure this guy's not over here. Enemies right there. Throw some grenades. And your machine gun's already set up, so if they run out of their cover because of that grenade, this MG is just going to simply shred him. And that'll be, that'll be GG for him. So make sure you guys use your smoke effectively because that can single-handedly allow you to push a point early or even later in the game. All right, guys, so the next big thing that I think is probably the most important thing in actual multiplayer matches is being aggressive. So if you guys don't know, there's a payback system for manpower. So say I have, I spend 100 manpower on this squad, right? Um, so slowly, you're going to still be making manpower back um, at a normal rate. Uh, it looks like 1.8 per second is what we're making it back. But whenever you lose a squad or like lose units, you slowly get paid back that that amount of manpower that you spent at a much slower rate. So, um, in case you guys didn't know that, that's that's a thing. And say I, say I lose 100 manpower squad in the beginning, I just get wiped. Then it's gonna take me like probably a minute and a half to get that paid back. So, on just it pays to be aggressive because you can get that paid back. Um, with your vehicles though, say something like you spend a thousand, thirteen hundred on a tiger, and that's gonna take that's gonna take fucking forever. It's gonna take like twenty minutes to get that paid back. So, manpower tanks usually aren't the best effective. It's best to use your doctrinal tanks and stay with infantry. But back to aggression. So aggression. So say I've taken this point. I've got some guys on this point. Um, we're fighting for this point. Um, he's got this right point. So I could just stay here defensively, dig in, and you should dig in. But after you've got some foxholes established, you've got some riflemen covering it, I'll push up the rest of your squad. So say I have. A, so they have a couple riflemen up here on this hill, just covering this foxhole. Say they're inside the point, they're covering this. Then I push up with the rest of my squad. So once again, squad positioning. Um, impacts that this can have is, so I'm just pushed up here, um, and we're still fighting for this point. He's trying to send in reinforcements, so his reinforcement spawn is going to be right here. He's going to be coming down this road, just coming in, bringing his units across here. So now I have some MGs, MG from this building, MG right here. They're going to be covering that area. So that's going to be disrupting him. He's not going to be able to get reinforcements in there unless he goes a long way or goes through the water, and that's just going to make his guy slower. So instead, he's going to have to deal with this before he gets over there. So he's going to be killing these guys while I'm capping this point, and I'm getting the advantage. Another point is, once again, spread out squad. Grenades can't take out the squad very much, very effectively. Just look at how the squad is raided. We have some riflemen back, riflemen back here, here. Machine gun over there covering the good lines of approach. Machine gun over here covering this line over here and can also shoot over there. Another rifleman supporting him. We have the MP40 covering the door in case those guys get taken out. He can cover anybody trying to rush in the door or throw grenades in. Um, then, additional, we have this guy over here. Notice he's our anti-tank. He's on hold fire. So a vehicle is going to push up here. Some people like to be aggressive with their vehicles. Throw an armor cart around here. Then what I would do is I would just simply direct control him. Come out here, just run out, and enemy tank, donezo, All right? So that's another cool thing. Just make sure you guys try to do sneaky tactics like that, so that way you can take out enemy um, tanks. So if I had him in this squad and in this building, he's all getting suppressed. He's suppressing the doors because he knows that's the way I'm going to come out of. Then I might not be able to get the Faust off because he might kill me when I pop up in the window. But if I pop up from somewhere else that he's not expecting, then I might be able to take him out. So... End of the day, make sure you guys are being aggressive. Be very aggressive with your infantry, your cheap vehicles. So like, so you get the Opal Blitz with the, uh, with this pack. You can be very aggressive with this, especially in the early game when there's not really counters. And have you seen in some multiplayer <laughs> multiplayer videos, um, they'll take like little cheap stuff like the Scout Car only 145. You can actually run over a full squad. Like a full squad, a lot of people what they'll do is they'll have a squad. And you guys will all be laying like this. We'll just all be laying in the in a row. So everyone's in a line, easy to run over. You can just literally run over the whole line. So that's another reason to split up your squads to avoid catastrophic things like that. You could all be prone. Scout car comes down, kills every single one of them. I've seen it happen in some videos. So make sure you guys are watching out for that, and make sure you guys stay aggressive. All right. Once again, another thing. So you're push, pushing up to this point. Um, enemies pushing up as well. Cool things that you can do is uh, actual direct control. All the times what I use direct control for is uh, for grenades. I use right mouse click um, for my grenades, but I usually won't do it in this when I'm throwing grenades. I go into third person. I mean overhead view. As you notice, he can throw it usually a lot farther than he normally can, and he won't have his uh, 
you won't like instead of like running out into the open like this to throw the grenade, you can stay over here and stay somewhat hidden. You could actually throw it over this and stay somewhat covered. So he throws that grenade. Right mouse click again. I'm throwing another grenade. So, so there's guys down in that cover. Oh, that's a smoke grenade. <laughs> but you get the idea. Um, reasons you might want to go into actual third third person down here is I'm sure you're rushing up. You have an SMG. You can easily just and then get back back behind cover. You're hiding back, reloading, come out from a different way, and you can destroy like entire squads like that. If like you happen to be direct controlling when he's watching somewhere over there, then it can be extremely effective. In addition, it's a uh, it's very effective to use it as um, on tanks as well. In fact, I highly recommend <coughs> that you direct control your tanks. So say there's like a tank hiding behind this house, um, this house here, and I'm trying to get it, then I might try to shoot through the side of this house because I, a lot of times you can shoot through it, but AI is not going to try to do that because they don't want to do that. So I just shot through that house and I killed the T-34 that was hiding on the other side. Huge things, you just got to watch out for that. Um, while we're in this vehicle, we're going to go ahead and take a look at ammo switching type. This is down in your bottom right. Make sure you guys are taking advantage of this. So, normally, I, have my, I brought my Hetzer because I want to kill this T-34 that's hiding out over here. But, there's some infantry coming around. So, what my AI is going to do, he's going to go away from looking at this, and he's going to be like, oh, there's infantry. Let me switch to HE. I'm switching to HE, and I'm going to start fucking some infantry up. He's fucking infantry up. Yeah, he's dropping bodies. Or he's missing, <laughs> but he's he's killing infantry. He's trying to kill infantry. Next thing you know, the T-34 pops out. Say it's a 57 millimeter one, and it just obliterates my head, sir. When he could have just been ready with his APCR or his um his heat ammo or his uh, anti-tank high explosive. You lock that ammo on there, then he's simply gonna fire only at vehicles now. He's not gonna waste his time trying to shoot some HE. So if you want him to remain kind of hidden back here and not be obliterating infantry he'll still shoot with his little machine gun unless you have him on hold fire so you just keep that in mind he might still reveal himself but he will not be firing he at these random infantry up here and giving him away to a t-3485 or t-3457 or something more catastrophic than that so make sure you guys are taking advantage of that and for direct control just make sure you don't get too too involved into it so say like i'm direct controlling over here i managed to ki kill Managed to kill a T-34, managed to kill like three or four infantry. That's all, that's great. That's awesome. Except I lost these two points with all my infantry on top of them because I was over microing this. Yeah, I caused some losses here and I've taken the left point, but I lost two points in the process. Make sure you guys aren't doing that and getting overly committed. All right, guys, for the next tip is to be about actually using your commander points. So, um, and what to look for for the enemy. So say I have got to use my first commander point. I'm going to get the Flak Panzer 38T. Because this thing's pretty powerful. And it's like a glass cannon. But it can obliterate infantry and light tanks. If they're not careful. So I buy this. I'm um, German offensive. And I know what I have for the rest of my tree. However, my opponent, I don't know what he has. So say he brings out a T50. Now I know exactly what he has. Okay, I know that he's support. And I know that I can probably expect double t-34s later in the game these are small details that you guys need to pay attention to because you don't want to be blindsided having your uh having your grill up here it's obliterating all his infantry you're up here just like killing the side of the points you have him flanking he's just wiping out so much infantry and then 15 minute mark hits and two t-34s come up and just ruin your day so just make sure you guys pay attention to that five minute mark is this one 15 is the second one and 25 is the last one so just be aware of where the timeline is at and be aware of uh, what your enemy has because you don't want to be seeing a political officer or a T-50 coming out and then 25 minutes you forget that he still has an IS-2 or Katusha and you just entire your entire defense just gets obliterated because you weren't planning on that or didn't have any reserve forces ready to go. So just be keeping that in mind and watching what your opponent uses. Sometimes it's more effective to wait to like six or seven minutes, see what your enemy brings in first and... Uh, and react from there. For me, I like to bring it right at five minutes to have most that most shock impact, and I'll just keep some AT units just in case they have something crazy. 
All right, guys, so the next cool thing is going to be your commanders. So you only get two of these per game, so you got to be very careful with them. However, what I would recommend is to always use them, like if it's a close game, always be using them on the points if you can. Now, don't just be crawling him up here to the very edge of the point. You want to have something, you want to build, that's why you want to build foxholes. So during the game, you want to try to get some foxholes, especially the edges of the points. Then you want to creep your, creep your officer in this little... <clears throat> this point make sure he's on hold fire you never want your officer firing unless it's a very last ditch effort and you can kill like one infantry and be fine but you want to keep him hidden so if you manage to crawl him onto this point say you have these three infantry and this officer defending this point two foxholes here and one foxhole back here with the officer versus he got like eight infantry over here you're still going to have cap weight on that point because he has like 10 cap weight for him so i think he's worth like 10 10 actual uh Cap weight. Let's let's just run him in here real quick. I th that's what I'm pretty sure he's worth. So just make sure you guys are taking advantage of him because yeah, he's worth 10 plus. So make sure you guys are taking advantage of the officers to hold your caps. I actually had many games where I've lost because people are using officers very effectively in the strategic points. So make sure you guys are using officers very effectively and taking advantage of the cap weight that they have. Just be careful with them. Use smoke to cover them or use foxholes and. Just know that the enemy, if the enemy sees that he's had this point, he's had this point, and then somehow he just switches like that, he's probably going to know there's an officer, and he might use a mortar and direct it to start bombarding the outside. So just keep that in mind, um, that he might try to kill that officer as well. Alright guys, the last tactic for this video is going to be thinking outside the box. Alright, so what do you see here? You have, I have a grill, I have a bike, and I have a um, little anti-tank Panzerfaust guy ready to go. So one cool thing that we could do with this is, so I have my bike. I'm going to tell these guys to get out. They're getting out of their bike. Alright, why would I do that? This rifleman, he's going to stay here. He's just going to be a rifleman. He's no longer the side gunner. He, he's done with that life. Alright, so he's going to go back in his... Um, Alright, he's going to be back to the driver, but before he does that, so you're going to press X, come view. Every single vehicle, or I mean, larger tank, has this demolition charge to take itself out, right? So I'm going to take this demolition charge. I'm not, I know I'm not going to use him super aggressively, so if the enemy takes it, then things are going beyond bad. So I'm going to put him in the motorcycle, and I'm going to put my anti-tank unit in the motorcycle. So right now, this unit just came from a little scout unit to a high-risk little anti-tank unit. So... Ideally, I take him over here and put him over here. I'm holding shift going over here and over here. So I've known with my scouts over this side, I've been scouting out for a little while. And I know that this side has been cleared. I've cleared up his left side and he's got pretty far on my right side, but I've cleared up his left. So I'm going to be pushing in with this little bike. And I'm going to come over here because I know he's got this indirect fire that's been firing at me from right here. Or there's been this tank that's been leveling my infantry over here and slowly taking them out. Either way, you have this bike now. Say he's got to where he needs to be, then you simply, you can simply get out with him. If you want to, you can self-destruct the bike. So we'll go over here, show you guys how to self-destruct the bike. LL. So. He has started self-destruction. And the bike will be taken out. Um, bam! Bike's taken out. Double LL. So, bike's gone. He's probably like, what the hell is that? Or if you don't want to do that, you just want to leave a bike. Now these guys are on hold fire. Hold fire. Now, we'll say this, that we're deep into enemy lines, right? This guy's just a scout. <coughs> Get him into a bush. Or get this one into a bush as well. They're on hold fire. So these guys are just going to be waiting over here. So imagine they're up here by the enemy spawn in. Or they're getting close to enemy artillery. So now what I would do with this double team is I would shock this unit. So he's going to be the first guy to fire. He's firing. He kills, shoots the tank. Tank is fucked up. It's like trying to figure out its life right now. So this guy is good to go. Phase two of the operation is going. He's coming up. He's coming up. He's running, he's running, he's running. Telling him to go, go, go. Go into here. I'm going to use the explosives. The tank is still shocked. He's trying to figure out his life. Um, the driver is trying to figure out his life. He's like, where the hell 
the gunner's looking for these guys, and bam, tank just got taken out. As quick as that, this two-man little guys with his little bike just managed to take out his IS-2. Something like that can go crazily wrong for someone, and you can make it go crazily right for you. So make sure you guys are using, using all these tips. I hope you guys like them. Please leave a like and subscribe. It definitely helps my channel. And I hope to see you guys on the next one, and goodbye.